Steven Spielberg's 1998 blockbuster, Saving Private Ryan, realistically portrays the Second World War and notably the Omaha Beach assault of June the 6th, 1944. The film won five Academy Awards, including Best Film Editing, Best Sound, and Best Sound Effects Editing. This DVD will explore sound editing techniques and their application within Saving Private Ryan. Firstly, we will look at the application of music in the film and when it was chosen to be used and not used. Then, we will examine sound effects and the use of surround sound in the film. So let's look at how and when the film uses music. The Omaha Beach scene shocked audiences due to its graphic portrayal of the harsh realities of war. Spielberg wanted the film to be as realistic as possible and so shot the scene from the point of view of one of the thousands of soldiers who took part in the raid. The scene has no music, which not only makes the scene more visceral, but takes the audience's attention away from the fact that they are watching a film. If we insert the Saving Private Ryan score over the top of this clip, it completely changes the dynamic of the scene. Music diffuses the tension and takes away the impact that the scene has. As you can see, music has taken away the realism from the scene. Its impact is in the fact that it has no music. I especially appreciated Steven Spielberg's and John Williams' choice not to put music in the battle scenes. That allowed those scenes to be more visceral. Anytime you put music in, even the most beautiful music, it makes the audience realize from moment to moment they're watching a movie. And what I think that opening battle scene especially does is pull you in and have you experience battle in a very direct way. Steven Spielberg from the very beginning, he said, I don't want the sound to be Hollywood. So what he meant was he didn't want the cliché stuff, things used in the library. There might be a lot of cheating with sound effects and, and classic war movies from Hollywood that are wrong. He wanted to be true as possible, true to the memories of what battle was like for people who were in it. When compared with a similar scene from Ken Anakin's 1962 epic, The Longest Day, we can see how much music can change the dynamic of a scene. Saving Private Ryan and The Longest Day take two different approaches to the Omaha Beach scene. Saving Private Ryan portrays the fear of the soldiers, which is enhanced by the sound effects of men vomiting and the monotonous drone of the landing craft. The Longest Day, however, uses music to help illustrate the courage and bravery of the soldiers. The scene is filmed in a far more Hollywood style than its equivalent in Saving Private Ryan, and so it is important to note how significant the style of a film is when considering if and when to use music. Valerie Orpen claimed in 2003 that non-diegetic music can either reinforce the meaning of image editing or contradict it. In this sequence, we see Captain Miller looking up and down the beach at all the fallen soldiers. This scene introduces music to evoke emotion from the audience. Music combines with the images to connote the scale of the battle and how many soldiers lost their life on that day. Whereas the previous sequence did not use music to heighten the realism, this sequence uses music to establish just how tragic D-Day was. And if we remove the music, we can see that the image on screen does not quite have the same impact as it does with music.
In the previous sequence, it is the sounds that drive the narrative and create the impact. But here, it is the music, and as can be seen, it does not work as well without it, because just the sound of the sea isn't strong enough on its own to evoke the emotion. The film builds up tension in the battle scenes through handheld camera work and realistic sound effects without using any music. The tension is then relieved through music in the aftermath of each battle. In an interview with Michael Jarrett, Walter Murch said that although music is an effective rallier of emotions, it's best used in film as something that directs or channels emotions that are already present. Saving Private Ryan conforms to this theory because it does not introduce music until the emotion, in this case tension, is built up. Now let's look at the use of sound effects and surround sound. Stephen shot at, at one great moment where the camera rises above the water and sinks below. And we're, you know, soldiers are underwater, we're above water. And the shifting of perspective back and forth. Above water, the battle is chaos, it's, it's cacophony. Underwater, it goes completely away. It's a cocoon, it's safe. And then into that scene come bullets and then the soldiers are killed. When the troops exit the landing craft, Many of them dive underwater to escape the chaos on the surface. The sound cuts out almost completely, leading the audience into a false sense of security. Bullets then pierce through the water and the audience become aware that nowhere was safe. As the camera bobs up and down under the water, the audience are gradually forced back into the full chaos of the battle. Further into the Omaha Beach scene, Tom Hanks's character, Captain John Miller, becomes shell-shocked, which is evident purely through the scene's use of sound. The sound becomes very quiet and muffled and almost muted out completely. This combines with point-of-view shots of Captain Miller looking around at the chaos that surrounds him, creating a disorientating effect on the viewer. And so sound becomes a key storyteller. This technique also allows the audience to get inside the character's mind and see the battle through his eyes and hear the battle through his ears, and so we identify with him. This essentially removes him from the battle and helps suggest that he is in his own world, all the whilst he is shell-shocked. As he comes back round, a progressively louder tea whistle sound throws him back into the full chaos of the battle. Saving Private Ryan combines a complex array of sound effects and foley work with 5.1 surround sound to connote the full scale of the battle. Surround sound is used to separate the two sides' artillery sounds. The German machine guns occupy the right and rear channels, whereas the Americans are played through the front and left. The additional channel for the Germans suggests the sense that the Americans were literally surrounded conforming to the way the rest of the scene is filmed and portrayed. Richard Adler said in 1981 that sound effects are simple devices to sharpen a visual statement, render a scene appropriately complex or add to the impact or aesthetic energy of a scene. Yeah. 
Surround sound is also used to suggest the scale of the battle. The sound of bullets fly from one speaker to the next, which creates a representation for the audience of how the battle would have actually sounded that day. Surround sound also allows multiple sound effects to be layered and played through different speakers to connote the full chaos and disorientation of the battle. Saving Private Ryan portrays the reality of war with no music to engage the viewer and disorientate them. It is a representation of what it was like for one of the soldiers. The constant firing of the German M1 machine guns dominate the scene and when combined with the over-the-shoulder shots of the German machine gunners, the American troops look like ants fleeing. Saving Private Ryan shows how the Germans had the upper hand because of their weapons and the fact that they were in bunkers up high, compared to the Americans in open space on the beach. The longest day, however, connotes the American strength in numbers. The music suggests camaraderie and patriotism, and the film portrays the Germans as the ones who were scared. So what have we learnt from this DVD? Firstly, we need to know that as an editor it is important to know when and when not to use music. Some scenes carry themselves without music or work better without it, such as the opening battle scene in Saving Private Ryan. But this also depends on the style of film. For example, the gritty handheld style of Saving Private Ryan suits no music, whereas the visual style of The Longest Day suits having music, and its lack of sound effects requires music to carry the scene through. Saving Private Ryan is a realistic film, whereas The Longest Day is far more Hollywood, and so both use sound very differently, despite being about the same event. Surround sound can add a lot to a film, particularly scale. It can be used to connote confusion and it can disorientate the audience, which is useful, particularly in battle scenes, to make them seem more realistic. Surround sound can also be used to denote the space that a person, people or object is occupying. For example, the two different armies in Saving Private Ryan. To conclude this DVD, it would be appropriate to note that Stephen Brown, in 1998, said that audio is one of the most underrated aspects of the visual medium and should never be given second-class status. Ambient sound, effects and music should always be considered. Thank <music> you.